I am Azam Khan and a mechanical engineer by profession. First, I congratulate you for the beautiful speech you have delivered. Now, my question is, water is called by different names in different languages, like in English as water, in Hindi as Pani, in Tamil as Tani. Similarly, if God is either called Ram or Jesus, is it not one and the same? So that was the question that water in different languages can be called as water in English, Pani in Hindi, Tani in Tamil. Similarly, God is one. Can we not call him by Ram or Jesus, etc.? Peace be upon him. As I mentioned in my talk, the Holy Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 110, Holy Dullah Abidur Rahman, Ayat Ma Tadu, Falaul Asma al Husna. Say, call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name and it should not conjure up a mental picture. It should contain the qualities of Almighty God. And the same message is repeated in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 8. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 180. As well as in Surah Al Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 24, which says, To Allah belongs the most beautiful names. You can call him by any name, but it should not conjure up a mental picture. Regarding a question that water is called by different names in different languages, and I know about it. In English it's called as water, in Hindi as Pani, in Tamil as Tani, in Arabic it's called as Ma. In Surah Alambia, chapter 21, verse number 30. In Sanskrit it's called as Apa. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 4. In Shuddha Hindi it's called as Jal. In Gujarati, as Jal or Pani. In Marathi, as Pani. It's called as in Kannad. It's called as Nir. In Telugu, Nir. And Malayalam as Vellam. Various languages. You can call. I gave you only 10 examples. Quran gives 99 attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... There is no objection if you call water in any language as long as it is water in any language. But it should be water. It should not be something else. For example, if suppose someone comes and tells me that I have been advised by my friend that every day in the morning I should have one glass of Pani. I know Pani means water, so I understand what he is saying. But then he continues, but when I have that one glass of Pani, I feel like vomiting. I ask him, why do you feel like vomiting? So he tells me, because the water stinks. It is yellowish in color. Later I realize that what he's talking is not pani, it is urine. <laughs> so somebody told him that you have one glass of urine, but the name he gave was pani. So you can call water by pani, tani, mani, apa, pani, no problem. But it should be water. You can call water by any name, but anything else beside water, neither can you call it water, neither can you call it pani, neither can you call it tani, neither can you call it as mine. Water as water you can call, but something else as water you can't call. People may think that what? An illogical example. Even an ignorant person can make out the difference between urine and water. Only a fool will not know the difference between urine and water, and I agree with them that even an ignorant person knows the difference between urine and water. Similarly, those people who know the concept of Almighty God, the correct concept, they say that these people who worship false God, they are not only ignorant, they are foolish. Can't they differentiate between a true God and a false God? You give it any name, but if it's a true God, you can give it the name of God. If it's not a true God, you're giving false God the name of God, aren't they foolish? They are foolish. For example, if you want to buy some gold, there's a person who comes and wants to sell his gold jewelry to you. And he says, this is 24 karat sona. You know that sona in Hindi means gold. In Arabic it is zahaba. You know it very well. But even after knowing that sona in Hindi is for gold, yet you will not just buy it like that. 
you will verify whether the sona what is calling 24 karat sona is it actually 24 karat gold or not you will not just buy it off what will you do you will go to a goldsmith and verify whether it is actually 24 karat sona or not and after verifying with the touchstone you know i give the example of touchstone in my talk he tells you it is fake though the jewelry was glittering but all that glitter is not gold you will verify before buying the sona whether it's actually sona or not why because you have to pay money for it you know you don't want to lose because you know if you lose a thousand rupees or ten thousand rupees it's precious so why don't you do the same when anyone says this is god you check it up with the touchstone which is the touchstone so a class chapter number 112 verse number one to four which says kul hu allahu ahad say he is allah one and only allah hu samad allah the absolute eternal lam milid balam yulad he begets not nor is begotten walam yakul lahu kufanad there is nothing like him so anyone says this is god you first check it up with the touchstone whether actually is god or not if he fits in that definition we have got no objection accepting that person who they are calling as almighty god for example suppose some lunatic he says that muhammad is be upon him he is almighty god a lunatic if he says that we know we muslims we love our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him we love him we will do anything for him we obey him even the non muslims michael echart when he wrote a book on 100 most influential people in the world number one he gave to the last and final message the prophet muhammad peace be upon him yet yet in spite of that you will use the touchstone so a class though we respect him maximum amongst all the human beings yet we we'll check with the touchstone so a class kul ho allah ahad say is allah one and only is muhammad one and only may peace be upon him allah has sent several messengers he is not the only messenger we agree is the last and final but quran says we have to believe in all the messengers do not differentiate in the belief of the messengers second is allah hu samad allah the absolute eternal you know that our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him he was a great human being but he was not absolute eternal he toiled he worked hard his biography tells us that he was even stoned many times he prayed to almighty god he was not absolute eternal third test is lam bil walam yulad he begets not nor is begotten we know that he was born in mecca he had a father and mother by the name of abdullah and amina he had parents he had children also fatima may allah be pleased with her ibrahim may allah be pleased with him he had he was begotten and he also beget so he is not allah subhanahu wa taala for sure though we muslim we love our prophet we respect our prophet no muslim in his true sense will ever say that prophet muhammad is almighty god never you know why because allah subhanahu wa taala has seen to it that the islamic creed the shahada says la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there is no god but allah and prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah we say this five times a day minimum in the adhan in the iqama before salah we always say there is no god but allah and prophet muhammad peace be upon him is the messenger of allah he is the servant of allah to see to it that no one however much he may love he may not equate him to allah subhanahu wa taala so whoever you are saying is almighty god you use the touchstone whether it be jesus whether it be ram whether it be krishna whether it be buddha whether it be mahavir use the touchstone i have given you the touchstone on the day of judgment i can give shahada to allah subhanahu wa taala that the thousands of people that were present here i showed them how to use the touchstone now the god that you worship the god that you worship you apply this formula of touchstone to that god if it passes the touchstone even i agree he is almighty god if it doesn't pass then you cannot call him god at all hope that answers the question